So this is a Swift Challenger 544. I'm going to take you around the van and show you how it works. Front locker, you've got your gas bottle and gas regulator. Yellow shut off valve at the top for the gas system. Uh, black screw fit in here will release the pipe work from the gas bottle and your on off valve for the gas bottle at the top. The hitch up procedure will go through in person here on site, the same as the handbrake, the hitch, uh, the hitch, the handbrake, and the jockey wheel, and the power to car, uh, power connection to the car. Then got your water pump connection on the side of the van. So on the water pump itself, you'll have a blue trigger. You pull the blue trigger in and push it into the side of the van. I'll show you that in a moment when we go inside. You then got your Truma heating cover. You'll need to remove this cover when you're running the caravan on gas. That be the heating or hot water. You've then got your battery locker on the side of the van with your quick release terminals on top and your mains power lead coming into the side of the van and your motor mover power switch behind there. Fridge vents on the side of the van. We'll let the hot air out of the fridge unit and allow the uh, fridge to get some air around it. You've then also got your motor mover which we'll demonstrate while you're here on site and we'll talk the wheel nuts also. You've then got your grey waste pipes coming outside the van so they push into place in the van and drop down into your waste master so the waste water has somewhere to go to. Toilet locker at the back of the van. This tank here takes three and a half litres of water and a cap full of the pink fluid before you use the toilet system and that is your flush tank. Then in the bottom here you have the toilet waste cassette itself. To release it you pull up the handle and pull it towards you. The neck here turns out so you can empty the waste out of the cassette and then you've got your orange pressure relief button on the back of that cassette also. Before you use the cassette, you'll need to put in through the cap here one litre of water and a cap full of the blue fluid. On the rear of the van on each side, you've got your wind down legs, as you can see. So you'll wind down each leg and stabilise the van before you use it or go inside the van. On this side of the van at the back, you've then got your storage access for the locker at the back of the van, as you can see, it allows you in the seating area underneath. Three pin plugs to allow you to get power to your awning wheels and motor mover again and then your barbecue gas point at the front down here oh no sorry another three pin plug at the front of the van also going inside the van above the door as you walk in you've got your power turn on so you've got your turn on for the power your water pump run which i'll come back to in a moment your leisure battery voltage and your vehicle battery voltage so again, I'll, do, I'll explain all of these as we go through the van. I'll explain um, the water pump system, etc., as we go through the van, shall I say. So on the display above here, you've actually got an indicator to let you know that you've got power coming into the caravan. I just need to go and turn the power post on, because at the moment it's not. So as you can see now, you've got power coming from the power post and to the caravan. And if we had a car connected to the caravan, you'd have power coming from the car to the caravan. Now to fill your water system on board the caravan, the first thing you can do is come underneath the seat on the far side of the van. And you're going to look for the yellow drain down valve, which at the moment is... So your yellow drain down valve is the valve that you can see just to the right of that blue fitment. The drain down valve, if it's pointing upwards towards the bottom of the seat, will allow the water system to drain down completely, so there's no water in the system. And if it's parallel with the floor as it is now, you'll be able to fill the water system on board the caravan. To fill the water system on board the caravan, what you need to do is, is come over to each tap on the caravan. And there's your water pump connection. So you've got your blue trigger there at the bottom I was just talking about. Open the tap up on the hot side on each tap. The same in the bathroom, on the sink and the shower. And then once you've done that, if you act where I'll connect on the outside, you can come over to your water pump switch, press the water pump switch, and you'll notice when the water system is full, the water will start running continuously out of each tap on board the caravan. At that point, you'll turn the water off to each point of the caravan, as you can see, and then you'll be able to start warming the water on board the caravan. To do this, Again, just down by the seat at the front, you've got a switch down here for the electric side of the water heating. So to turn on the electric water heater, you'll flick this switch to the top and that'll allow the water system to warm up to around 35 to 40 degrees. 
If you want to warm it up hotter than that to around 60 degrees, you can put it onto the bottom section here. So flick the switch down and that will allow the water to warm up to, like I said, around 60 degrees of temperature. I'm just going to turn the water pump off. In the front window of the caravan, you've got your option to run gas on the gas water heating. So what you can do is, if you want to run the gas water heater at around 50 degrees, you'll flick the switch up. It will self-ignite, and if it ignites on gas, you'll get a green light appear in this side. And if it fails to ignite, you'll get a red light on this side. Very much the same, if you want to run the uh, water heater at 70 degrees of water temperature, you'll hit the switch to the bottom side, and that will warm, uh, warm the water up to around 70 degrees. Go to the heating system next. On the wall on the far side of the van, you have a dial just here that has 500, 1000 or 2000 watts down the side. Now this is for your electric heating. Depending on what caravan site you're on, you'll have the option of 500, 1000 or 2000. And you'll spin the grey dial on the outside to the relevant power setting. To control the heat of the heater, you'll use the black dial in the centre between 1 and 9 to control that temperature. To turn the heater back off, you'll spin it round to the zero on the side here. And that will turn off all power supply to the heater. To use the heater on gas, you've got the dial on the left hand side here, and you'll spin the dial round to between 10 and 9, hold down the gas valve, and then the window down the front at around 45 degree angle from the floor, you'll have your pilot light in that window. Once it's ignited and the pilot light's lit, you'll hold down the gas valve for a further 5 to 10 seconds, then slowly release the gas valve and control the temperature on the dial on top. On the opposite side, you've got your blown air heating, so in the centre here, you've got a dot that will allow the heat to come out the front of the heater. But if you want to use your blown air so it comes out the vents around the caravan, you'll flick this switch over to the wave symbol on the left hand side, and then you can control the fan speed on the dial on top. Yeah. If you want to use if you want to use automatic blown air so it cuts in and out with the thermostat, you'll put it onto the A on the right hand side, and that will allow the thermostat to control the blown air so it comes on and off as the van cools down and warms up. As I said, back in the centre, it will allow the heat out the front of the heater. With the fridge unit itself, very simple to use, power on. Wait for it to load up. In the centre here, it's letting me know that we're connected to mains power and the fridge is operating on mains. And then you can control the temperature on the button on the right hand side. If you want to ignite, uh, use two, uh, 12 volt while you're towing, so you can use the fridge as a cool box, you can put it onto the 12 volt mode here. And like I said, that will allow the fridge to work as a cool box. If you want to ignite the fridge on gas, you press the button on the left hand side again and it goes over to gas. And the blue light down the bottom here is your pilot light. If it fails to ignite, it will flash this blue light here. And it will bring up an error code 9 on the screen. Just to let you know it has failed to ignite. To control the temperature again on gas, you use the button on the right hand side. For now I'm just going to turn the fridge back off. Cooker, very self-explanatory, electric ring will only work on 240 volts, the rest of the oven will work on gas solely. The microwave, we do advise before travelling, you remove the microwave plate out the front of the, out the microwave and put it into a safe store or a safe area so you can tow the van without having to worry about it popping out. Coming down to the back of the van, and the last thing we generally go through on a caravan is the toilet system. Electric flush on top, as you can see here. You've got your waste flap down the front to allow the waste through into the cassette underneath the van. And the to toilet does turn for your convenience, as you can see here. On top of the toilet, you've also got a full indicator light, so it lets you know when the toilet cassette is full and when it needs emptying. Um, so that will illuminate red if that does happen. If you have any further questions on the Sport uh, Swift Challenger 544, please do give me a call here at the Caravan Company and I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.